I think it's safe to say guacamole is one of those foods you either love or hate. National Guacamole Day was just this past Saturday, and we couldn't let the day go by without celebrating with a recipe that has a unique twist. Chef Ellen Dorr is the owner and head chef at Chef Ellen here in Sioux Falls. Step aside, Average Guac Recipes, because she's here today to show us how we can level guac up into something new and exciting. Yes. Welcome, Chef Ellen. Thanks for having me. So when we think of guac, we think of, you know, that green appetizer. It can vary. There can be some different, you know, maybe a southwestern type with some beans or corn, yep. some cilantro, some tomatoes. But this is totally different. What are we doing today? We're doing guacamole deviled eggs today. I've never heard of this before, but it sounds delicious. You know, I, this is a recipe I found a couple years ago because I was tasked with bringing deviled eggs to a dinner party just in the family, and I was like, well, I can't do the regular ones. And I found this, I was like, okay, this is easier, and it looks better, so let's go with it. And it was a hit, so we've just been making it sense. Let's get started. How do we create this? So in the bowl already, I have got my six egg yolks from my egg, and then I mix that with a couple of tablespoons of sour cream. You can also use mayo if you want to do dairy free. And then there's a little bit of lemon or lime juice that you can throw in and salt and pepper. And then the next thing obviously we have is our avocados. So I've got a couple avocados here because nobody ever knows how to pick an avocado when you're at the store yeah, staring at all of them. Yeah, do you have tips for us? How do I know when, maybe I don't pick the right one, but how do I know when it's ripe to use it? So if it's ripe to use, it's going to still have a little green, but it's going to be soft to the touch and going to have a little give. Now this one over here, it has like a lot of give and you can almost feel some like air pockets, it feels like underneath the skin. That's going to be a little too ripe and going to be brown. If you're going to be baking, those are great. If you only have the really green ripe avocados, you can get a couple a few days ahead of time, throw them in a paper bag that's closed and they'll help ripen them quicker. Okay, so if I'm at the grocery store and I'm gonna use it right away to bake, I can do something like the brown one that has a lot of air in it because I'll be using it right away. Yes. But otherwise, if I'm looking for something I'm gonna be using like the next day, I'll want something more like that. Yep, so you wanna make sure it still you know, has a little bit of toughness. It's not gonna just collapse under your hands. And that way, when you cut it open, Cut it and go all the way around that pit. You should have that nice bright green color. So, and Perfect. I bet if we cut this one open, since it's a little more ripe, we're gonna have a few, and you can even see the knife has a harder time getting through the skin there. But this one is gonna have a few more brown spots starting near the top and especially around where the pit is as okay. well. Fun fact, I did learn online, I think it was TikTok, that if you cut up your avocado and you store it in water in like a dish, it'll last a lot longer in yes. the fridge. You know what else you can do is get a Ziploc baggie, put your guacamole in here, squish it so that it's like flat, close the top, you can freeze it and it'll stay nice and green. Ah, okay. I know. Good tips, because these when they go bad, it's like, okay, you wasted it then. Yeah, I, I hear ya. So with this, we're gonna take our half avocado and best tool for the job with this is usually a spoon. So you're just gonna spoon that half avocado and you can kind of adjust this recipe based on how much you want in there. You can do a full avocado, you can do a half. I've got a fork that I'm kind of mushing it with. You can put, if you want it spicier, some cut up jalapeno in here. Ooh, could you use different types of spices too? I know you said that you used um, salt. We use salt and pepper. You could do like some cumin, chili powder, Ooh, and chili you know, powder. anything with a little bit of that kind of Mexican flair. So this gives you a little bit of a green color too. Now one thing with these deviled eggs is you don't want to be making them ahead of time because it's really hard to store these in a way that they'll be airtight and the guac won't start to turn right. brown. So there's two ways that you can go to fill up your deviled eggs. You can either go the old school, gonna be messy and just spoon and fork it in there. Or you can take your Ziploc baggie and this one I cut off the corner of. Ah, oh, this is a good tip. So you roll the top of the bag over so you don't have a bunch of guac getting all over where you're about to touch. And then you just spoon that in there. Such a simple hack that I'm sure a ton of people looking right now are like, why didn't I think of that? I know, that? and I mean, you're frosting cakes or anything. And right. so then there you go, and you've just got a little bit in oh, there, and you easier. just go around. Ooh, I little, prefer this method, chunk. I think. So yeah, nothing too crazy. And then with these, if you've got cilantro lovers around, you can Some people think it tastes like soap. Some people, yeah, we were I talking about this. About 14% of people or something can't, don't like the cilantro, they get the soapy taste, but you can put like one little leaf over them. So you could do half with, half without. Half with, half without, and then it's like the most simple garnish just to make it look fancy, and then you're bringing this nice little tray of deviled eggs. 
Could you also chop it up and just put it in the mixture? You could. You could throw it in the mixture. You could even throw like a tablespoon of salsa or something in yeah. the mixture too. You can just play with it. It's a blank canvas. So when I think of guac too, a lot of times you'll cut up like onions or like I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. like beans, corn, and there's a lot of extra things you can add. I've even seen ones lately with like pomegranate in it. Yes. Would that taste okay with the ochre? Do you recommend just going with like the simple deviled egg? I would egg? start with the basics because of that egg taste and then you can kind of taste it and go from there. So start with your eggs and your um, avocado, your salt and pepper, and then say, okay, I want a little more citrus in here. The more citrus you add, by the way, the longer it's going to stay green for you too. Oh, so if okay. you want to go really citrus heavy, it's probably going to withstand if you're setting it out on a table a little bit longer. Um, if you're just, you know, passing around a dinner for two to four this year, then, you know, just make a couple, put them on a plate and you'll be good. And this is something that you would do right before going to that? Yes, I would do this kind of last minute, the last thing we do before dinner. You could have the eggs, I guess, already. Yeah, hard these boiled, eggs I boiled last night, and you know, you have just the ingredients sitting there, and it takes about five minutes to whip it all up. And how perfect is this plate to present them on? I mean, deviled eggs. Amazing. Plates. I've never seen one of those before, <laughs> so that helps. And then I guess you could put some stuff in the middle, too, if there's anything yeah. else people want, because. Honestly, if you like eggs, I could see people wanting to use it as like a dip too. Yep, so you can get like another little bowl of dip and then just put your veggies all around the yeah. outside, have your little hors d'oeuvre appetizer kind of area going on. Well, what a fun way to eat guac. This looks, looks absolutely delicious and it's so unique. So thank you so much, Chef Ellen, for absolutely. coming in and teaching us how to make it. Thanks for having me.